Hello, everyone, and welcome to this virtual edition of our Femzy 2020 conference, taking a bite out of ocean education. My name is Caitlin Rivera, and I am the president-elect of Femzy as of yesterday. So thank you so much for joining us today. For those of you who don't know, this is not exactly how we do our normal conference presentation. None of us here at FMZ are Zoom professionals, so we appreciate your understanding if we do happen to run into any technical issues on our end during this session. The presentation will be about 40 to 45 minutes with time for questions at the end for a total of an hour. Please feel free to type in your questions in the chat box on the screen throughout the presentation. At the end of the presentation, I will select a few questions from the chat box for Jillian to answer for you. I am pleased to introduce our presenter for this session, Jillian Morris. Born and raised in Maine, Jillian's love for the ocean started at an early age and has continued to play an integral role in her adult life. She has spent thousands of hours in the field working and diving with sharks across the globe. She is a marine biologist, shark conservationist, scuba instructor, explorer, and educator. She is the founder and president of education nonprofit Sharks for Kids. She has filmed for numerous television shows and networks, has appeared on Shark Week, is a Patty Ambassador diver, was named Scuba Diving Magazine's July 2016 Sea Hero, and was awarded the inaugural Shark Con Shark Hero Award in 2017. She is the author, Norman the Nurse Shark, and a member of the prestigious Ocean Artists Society. So everyone, if we can go ahead and welcome Jillian. Jillian, you are already a co-host, so whenever you are ready, you can take it away. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I actually live in the Bahamas uh, on a little island called Bimini, so I wasn't going to be able to attend the actual conference. Uh, so I'm really excited that this has actually worked out and to, to be speaking with you guys today. So uh, thank you, Caitlin, for the warm welcome and, and thank you all uh, for joining today and, and wanting to spend a little time um, learning about sharks, but also really about Sharks for Kids, our programs, um, how you bring this into the classroom, why you should bring this into the classroom, and some of the opportunities that exist, um, both in person or virtually, which is uh, really kind of the realm that we're all living in right now. So it kind of fits perfectly into, into that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Let me share my screen here. All right, so I am a marine biologist. Um, so I've spent a lot of time studying mostly sharks. I've been really lucky. I've, this work has taken me all over the world uh, to work on various projects, uh, studying different species. Uh, I also do now a lot of photo and video work. So have worked for numerous television shows uh, and you know, really just spent a lot of time with these animals. The reason I, I've lived in the Bahamas for eight years now uh, is because, because of sharks. They've actually shaped my life. Um, and so most days I'm out on the water, uh, not recently, but um, most days I'm out on the water catching and tagging sharks, filming, photographing them, teaching students about them, and, and just really involved in a lot of different activities. So that kind of, um, they've always been a big part of my life, a big passion. And so really now with Sharks for Kids is, is sharing that experience with others. So um, really fascinating animals. I love learning more about them. My background is actually in behavioral biology. So why do animals do what they do? But then how do we translate that? How do we bring that to other people? Um, because ultimately sharks need a better PR team. And that's probably the number one question I get from people who might be a little bit hesitant. Uh, I sort of see two sides. I see, yes, this is amazing. I love sharks. I want to do this. Awesome. Um, or even like, I don't know a lot, but it sounds cool and kids love sharks. Yeah. 
But a lot of people just ask why. Why sharks? Why should I care? Uh, why should I bring them into my classroom? I live in Idaho. I don't even see the ocean. My kids have never seen the ocean. Why should I care? And for a lot of people, it's hard for them to understand because this is what they think of, or 47 meters down. And it's not even crazy movies, it's in the news. And for those of you that are Florida based, uh, you've heard it, you've seen it um, in the, you know, earlier this year when the black tip migration happens and people start freaking out. We do bites do happen. This is a real thing. I'm not going to try and tell you, and I never tell students that bites don't happen. They do. They're just very, very rare, and it's not what you see and hear. Um, you know, killer shark, monster, man eater. These are still headlines that are not just in crazy movies. They're on major news stations. And if you've watched the news in Florida, you've probably seen those headlines. Um, and so this is probably one of the biggest challenges for convincing people why sharks. Right, because this is what is so ingrained for so many people. Um, luckily, I think in Florida, people are avid ocean goers, um, whether they're surfing, diving, fishing, out on the boat, uh, so have a bit more experience and exposure to the ocean. Um, but that doesn't mean that people still don't feel like this. And you guys know I'm not going to talk a lot about the food chain and the value of sharks. Uh, environmentally, they keep ecosystems balanced and healthy. This is really important for oceans no matter where we live. Um, but there's also an economic value. And a lot of times people don't understand this or uh, talk about this. We're so focused on the environment, which is, is super important, but sometimes that's a big concept for kids to understand, or even adults, to really understand how that system actually works and at what point does it start breaking down. Uh, in the Bahamas, uh, we have the shark diving capital of the world. So more people come to the islands to swim with these animals. Maybe you guys have been there to dive with them, uh, to see them, to snorkel or go on a, you know, some sort of tour. Uh, and so that brings a lot of money. It brings about uh, nearly $114 million each year. This was a study done by the Cape Luther Institute in Pew in 2015, and they figured out all of this money's coming in. So in the Bahamas, these animals are worth way more alive than dead, right? It's also a shark sanctuary. So it's illegal to catch and kill sharks. So we're very, very lucky. And all of this matters is because there are these ideas that they're monsters, they're man-eaters. Maybe people don't really understand the importance. So you know, our work focuses on obviously the environmental impact and, and role they play, but also the economic value. And all this matters because actually these animals are in trouble. This is another question I get. Well, why? Are they in danger? I see lots of sharks that go out, they're everywhere. Okay, yeah, maybe for that species, but actually 25% of all sharks and rays are threatened with extinction, right? Each year there's kind of, they do an analysis um, through IUCN, which is a red list, they kind of rank things whether they're endangered, critically endangered, vulnerable. And <clears throat> a lot of that is because humans are actually killing. This is a number. This is a really big, scary number. And I usually ask students to think about this number. This is approximately how many sharks humans kill every year. On average, about five people die from shark bites in the world each year. Five. It's very, very, very rare. Right? Um, and there's lots of things people will tell you, coconuts, vending machines, taking selfies, uh, mosquitoes, cows, kill more people than sharks. But we don't see horror movies about cows, um, or at least I haven't seen one. Right? Uh, and a lot of times as well as people say, oh, well, this doesn't happen in the US. This happens in other countries. This doesn't happen where I live, right? Wrong. This is a local issue and a global issue, okay? Go to Publix, you can find shark steak, right? Go to GNC, Walgreens, Target, shark cartilage pills. Souvenir shops, Jaws, sharks in jars. I don't know about in you know, Northern Florida, but I know in, in like Miami, Fort Lauderdale, I've seen baby unborn sharks in jars, right? So this isn't a, a foreign problem only. Yes, it is happening globally, but it's happening in our own backyards. 
So, and it's happening to species we know of. Uh, probably all of you have seen, uh, I see them all the time on Instagram, they're on the news, they're on, you know, they come up as monster shark landed in Florida, and it's usually a great hammerhead. Well, the great hammerhead shark is a critically endangered species, right? And their population is going down. So yeah, that's still legal. That's another issue that's happening. Laws are changing and getting better, but this is still happening in our own backyards, right? So the why is that these animals are extremely important for healthy oceans all around the world. Um, they're extremely valuable for different nations. Maybe not as much in the US, but there are shark diving operations. <laughs> the rules are a little bit different. Um, and so they are bringing an economic value as well. And the other reason is really kids are amazing, right? Kids, they will make a difference. Kids have a voice. You guys teach, your students are creative, right? Depending on the age range, I'm always amazed. But look at that, Kristen, four years old. Very simple. Don't kill sharks because children want to see them. I've talked already a lot and made this way more complicated. Kristen there at age four made it pretty simple. They want to see sharks in their oceans, and that's amazing. Another book kids in Singapore made, uh, these were grade two students. So students have a voice. They make a difference. If they see somebody throwing trash on the ground on the beach and they say something, that person is gonna react and think about their action. If I say something to that person, it's probably gonna be a different, maybe less friendly response that I'm going to get, right? Kids are powerful, right? They make a difference. And I love this little video. These are students in Nairobi. Um, and I just thought this was really sweet. I apologize if this is super loud. I'm gonna turn it down. Those kids are not in a fancy school. Um, I've done several lessons with that group. Uh, you know, they, th those kids haven't seen the ocean, but the teacher felt it was valuable for students to learn about the ocean. And, and those kids now are, are kind of, they're more informed, they're excited, they're interested, and, and they will make change. Kids that really, ultimately, Sharks for Kids was born out of a belief that kids can make a change. They can make a difference. They have a voice. We just need to inspire them and give them the tools to speak up. And that's really uh, ultimately what Sharks for Kids came out of. Um, my experience as a, as a biologist, uh, doing a lot of photo and video work, and decided that combining that could create something and be those tools that students wanted. So our mission is to create the next generation of shark advocates through education, outreach, and adventure. So we sort of have this three-tiered approach. And it's really, it's not just lessons and talking to students, it's really kind of leading by example, but also highlighting what other students are, do, are doing. Um, because it, my belief that students have a voice also means they inspire other kids. So I can talk to students a lot, um, I can visit schools, I can do all these programs, but when a student takes action, they make a poster, they do a video, they do a beach cleanup, it inspires other students, right? They're leading by example. So, really it's a three-tiered approach. And the first part of that, right, is really exposing kids to these amazing animals. Ultimately, that's the goal, showing them with unique content. Uh, you, you'll notice like, if you've already looked through our site, maybe you haven't, but a lot of media, um, this is just a quick clip of me diving with actually my favorite animal on the planet, that hammerhead with her split in her fin, her name is Scylla. I've been diving with her for almost five years. Um, so now I'm gonna kind of take you into a little bit of the start, sort of the curriculum and lesson plans, because we took an approach to make a really interactive experience for students and teachers. So I'm gonna stop this and just jump into the website quickly. Yes. 
second here. Maybe. Let's see. I'm still sharing. I'm sharing. Hopefully this is kind of work now. Okay, so hopefully everyone is seeing the website now. So sharksforkids.com. Um, it's laid out. We try to make it as simple as possible. So really for you guys, there's a four teachers section. You can go in, uh, kind of start with curriculum. What we have created is we've used a lot of, maybe we'll see if the internet, there we go. Uh, right now we have K through kind of six, seven, uh, just finishing. We have a high school packet that's going to go up and a final, a second sort of grade seven, grade eight. It kind of depends on where you are, but all of these are aligned with the next generation science standards. So they look at it, they're not strictly that, but they've included that. Some of the Sunshine State standards, also ocean literacy. The idea is to make this very, very simple. So. Uh, if you're not, uh, you don't have to be a biologist to teach this. Uh, you don't have to even know, ideally, you don't even have to know what a shark is. We tried to make it as simple as possible. So you click in, uh, and this may align. A lot of it is tricky because different states have different um, sort of approaches and materials, but you'll see a full teaching packet uh, right there. This includes a PowerPoint with a teaching guide, so lots of slides, and I'll show you in a little bit kind of what that includes. Uh, we always do a vocabulary list. There may be videos that go with it, um, activities as well. So kind of make it as complete as possible. Uh, they're designed so that you can do portions of them. Most of the teaching packets are considerably long, uh, maybe longer than what you're used to. But the idea was that you could incorporate the bits and pieces that really fit for what you're trying to do. You might not need to do the whole thing. If you have time, you can, great. Uh, but you might not have the time to do that. So you might have to pick out what kind of uh, aligns with a particular lesson you already have to do, and then there's some fun activities as well. Uh, we have additional activities you'll see after. Um, let's see if this is... Now, if you scroll down, additional curriculum, these are more specialty. So marine food chains, deep sea sharks, uh, ones about osmoregulation, shark teeth, sawfish, and we have a couple of things translated as well. Uh, so these are really more specialized packets uh, if you wanted to dive deeper into a particular curriculum. The activities as well, this is the idea that these go along with the lesson plans. They can be standalone, anything from writing to coloring and drawing. We have adaptations, and it'll, you can kind of see like that's designed for grade three, four, and it's, it'll have on the front of it the NGSS standards. Yeah, so lots of different kind of activities, and then slightly older. And it says for teachers, but you know, we hope that students kind of dive into that as well. We have a lot of coloring sheets. Uh, you can see some translate some crafts. I'll just show you these really quickly. Kids love uh, for you that teach maybe older, although I just got another adult coloring book with sharks in it. So I feel like this is very therapeutic for all ages. Um, but yeah, so we have lots of coloring pages. A lot of them have facts on them. So not just a plain cartoon. Um, but so just kind of engaging students to learn a little bit more. Yeah, it's fun to color, but what can I learn? And one of our big focuses is most of the time if you ask someone if they can name a shark, they can name a great white shark, a hammerhead, a tiger shark. But can they tell you about a pajama shark or a basking shark or the Caribbean rough shark, which is awesome, uh, the winghead. So yeah, it's really to hopefully get kids excited about, there are over 500 different species of shark. Um, a lot of our materials though you will find are local species, just because I'm based in the Bahamas, a lot of the same species in Florida. So uh, when we first started, most of our materials were, we were using the content that we had, the videos, the photos, um, and so, you know, if you're a teacher in Florida, these are species that maybe the kids have seen or they've heard of. So it is that local knowledge, but also understanding, you know, global shark issues as well. So 
lot of fun there, very easy um, for students to download, kind of a range of slightly older student pages, uh, but also very kid friendly for, for younger students. Crafts as well, this has been really fun, um, you know, for right now. And then the rest of it's pretty self-explanatory. So we've got some different activities, videos on how to, the how to drawing ones have been a lot of fun. I've done them as well. So, and uh, because I do not do the artwork for Sharks for Kids. And so I took some of these fun lessons. Uh, yeah, lots of fun coconuts. You guys have some coconuts cleaning up the yard. Great little activities we have there, right? So uh, also just, you know, students, the same section, ways to get involved. Um, education, I'm going to talk about a little bit in just a second. So I'm going to jump back into the PowerPoint, hopefully. Bear with me. All right. So that's really the start. And that's where we, um, oh, no, hang on. Let me just jump to the next one. We started with classroom materials. So that's really the, kind of the easiest way. Um, and it's hopefully it aligns with particular lesson plans you're required to teach predator prey systems, um, you know, certain vocabulary terms, and we're just applying that using sharks um, or ocean systems. Uh, the deep sea shark also talks about the different depths of the ocean, the different zones. So maybe you want to talk about zones and you want to use the different sharks that live in them. So uh, yeah, it's really designed to make it pretty easy. The guides are very thorough. Uh, really that we worked with teachers to get feedback on what's helpful. The next sort of approach is we do classroom visits. So we travel all over the world. We do a lot in Florida and a lot in the Bahamas. Uh, so our team can come to you. They can speak to your class, your school. We usually try and spend a day. We can uh, align it to specific topics. Uh, if you're talking about adaptations, for example, that's a big request is to use sharks because um, as a species, uh, you know, or multiple species, they have some really incredible adaptations. So it's amazing to use them as examples when you're talking about that from their camouflage to bull sharks that can go in fresh water, the shape of the hammer head, the special sensory systems they have. Um, so yeah, a lot of really interesting adaptations. So perfect animal when you're talking about that. So something special is just a general intro to sharks um, and, and really just kind of connecting the, your students with a person, someone who is there. We do this virtually as well. So we've been doing Skype uh, for eight years now. So we've been doing the virtual thing. Uh, we were pretty prepped and ready for uh, a lot of uh, classroom requests now. Um, we've been doing that because the world is big and travel is expensive, but we want to connect with a lot of classrooms. And when we first started, it was just three or four of us, and we couldn't travel everywhere, but we were, we're Skype partners. We've traveled over a million miles using Skype. Uh, so, and uh, I think we're at over 56 countries now that we've Skyped in with. So yeah, virtual lessons, this isn't, um, this isn't really new for us. This is something that we've been doing and we've been prepped for. That also includes Google Hangouts, Google, I guess it's Meet now. So if you can, and we have some of these from before, but we continue to offer these as well. We do our general ones with our team. We also do monthly ones featuring other marine scientists. You can just kind of see here, uh, we did a women in science. We're doing a women in science week right now for our webinars, but women in science all on our YouTube channel and our hangouts are really interactive. We usually have uh, five, six or seven classrooms. So they get to watch, ask questions with the scientists, with the host, uh, very, very interactive experience. And the same thing with the in-person is the idea is to not just simply have someone stand up there and teach you, but you are interacting with someone who is living and breathing this work. And because our team are marine biologists, uh, the, the three founders, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the guys in just a second. Um, maybe I'll go see it on here. Hmm. Weird. Um, so yeah, so myself, uh, my co-founder, Dr. Derek Burkholder down at the 
bottom left and Duncan Brake in the top middle. Um, we're all marine biologists. We've all studied sharks all over the world, uh, sort of have gone in different paths. Duncan films now for things like Shark Week, Animal Planet, BBC, Discovery Channel, and so is now using his science background to tell the story of scientists. Derek uh, runs the Guy Harvey Research Institute shark tagging program uh, in Fort Lauderdale, but is also uh, head of the Broward County Sea Turtle Program. So he does a lot with sharks and turtles. And uh, so our background is science. So that's a big part of what we wanna share with students and, and we share our experience. So yeah, the lesson plans are very easy for anybody to, to talk about, but we really try and deliver something special when we go into the classroom or virtual. So it could be if you wanted just to start a shark talk uh, on science techniques, methods for studying a particular animal. I did a webinar uh, yesterday that was all about how do we actually study sharks, the equipment that we use, and why do we do it? So uh, a big part of what we do includes science, uh, how it's done, why it's important, and how kids can you know, get them thinking about careers. That's a big part of it, especially for our older students who might be interested and maybe don't really know what shark science looks like. And so we want them to understand that. And that includes using actual real life examples. So this is a project that we currently have going. Um, Duncan and I are the kind of the co-PIs for this. So this is a tiger shark that was tagged off of the island of Saba. And this is using a satellite tag uh, on that shark and tracking her movements. So we talk about actual real science projects. So this is showing one of the sharks her actual track. We have videos to really engage students and help them understand what does this mean. So that spot tag is sort of our version of an iPhone for sharks. Got a computer, batteries, it's bolted to the fin, shark swims off, and any time that shark comes to the surface, like you see all those green dots, it transmits a signal up to a GPS and we get an email from our shark showing us where she is. All right, this particular tiger shark is about nine feet in length. Um, she's still wearing this hat. We're still getting data from her. We hope it's going to last a little bit longer. It's usually about four years. So we're probably getting to the end of our battery life on that tag. Um, and what we're looking at is migration patterns, trying to understand. We know there's tiger sharks throughout the Caribbean, lots of them. There are certain sanctuaries, uh, but we're trying to understand where they give birth so that we can get better areas of protection. Uh, so understanding where females go and what time of year and looking at if there's lots of them. And we talk about that with students. We're sharing that with students. Right? Our graphics are, we have a lot of very, we've created our own. Um, we have some very talented artists, not myself, but other people that work with us. And so we're showing, we're using real resources. These are our images that we've taken, that we've created uh, to show students. So very hands-on, very interactive, and very live, real content. This is the stuff that we've pulled from books. Um, we're, we're really connecting with scientists and if it's not research we're doing or haven't done, we're connecting actually with the scientists that are doing it. Again, graphics. Teeth always come up when you talk about sharks. So it's, I like showing this one because just give kids an idea of how different they are. They have this idea that that third one in the top, the great white tooth, that's what they all look like. Actually, they don't. And, uh, and then that leads to topics of diet, um, topics of how sharks eat and it's sort of an interesting puzzle piece because when we look at um, we look at their teeth it helps us understand what they're actually eating and how they're eating and we create take home sort of printable materials as well this is one of our newest ones the great hammerhead shark so this is great for the classroom um, if the students really love sharks, they can print it out poster size, have it at home. Um, but again, trying to make interactive materials, not just uh, a, a kind of a standalone lesson plan. And really cool science as it's happening. So this was only discovered a couple years ago. Swell sharks glow, and only other swell sharks can see it. So our eyes see what's down at the bottom other swell sharks see the glow at the top or the special cameras that scientists are use, using to see this. And they believe that this is how these sharks are communicating. 
right? So new science, as it's happening, we're always updating, we're always incorporating, uh, and we connect with different scientists from around the world to try and share the newest materials. This is a little video we've created. So rather than just talk about dermal denticles, the teeth that cover the shark's entire body, we're using technology and showing and videos and again, trying to make it interactive. Uh, so you can show a slide and say, okay, or that was taken with, they're using CAT scans, right? To scan the skin of sharks, to look at the dermal denticles. So when you talk about that they're little skin teeth and they're microscopic, that's kind of a hard concept, but when you can actually show it, uh, using high-powered microscopes and CAT scans, I think it's easier for students to remember. So um, just, yeah, quick backtrack because the slide got moved out of place. Sorry, guys. Again, this is Duncan, co-founder, um, a lot of Shark Week shows, uh, a lot of BBC, National Geographic, Discovery, Animal Planet. So because he does that kind of footage, we have a lot of really um, incredible footage of, of these animals that we have access to. Uh, we don't have to borrow or ask for. Uh, we have our own um, from all over the world, which is really amazing. And Derek, who's uh, based in Fort Lauderdale, um, again, the works at the Guy Harvey Research Institute, but also the Broward County Sea Turtle Program, and our ambassador team. So we have ambassadors from all over the world. Uh, we have lots of people in Florida, but we have people all over the world that are visiting classrooms. And a big part of that is uh, we have, most of our ambassadors are actually female. And I think that's really important because in general, we want more women in STEM careers. And so when one of our team members stands up in front of a classroom, they're talking about their own experiences from working in labs, out in the field, different research methods. And I think when you have somebody that can go in and talk about personal experience with students, they can relate to that. And we want young girls, female students, to be able to relate to the person in front of them. So uh, we have men ambassadors as well, and, and they're doing just as many visits. But uh, being a female that's worked in science, this was really important for me because I grew up in a small town in Maine, and there weren't a lot of women doing what I was interested in. Right? The, the people on TV were men. People uh, that visited my school with animals were men. Right? I found a, an old Nat Geo book at a yard sale that had Sylvia Earle in it. Went, what? What is she doing? This is amazing. This is, I want to do this. But I had never met someone. I'd never seen someone in person or even on TV that did what I wanted to do. So if we can put someone in front of students that they can relate to um, and understand and connect with, I really believe this will encourage them. For them to realize that this is for them too and that comes to the diving aspect of it the research the photo video um you know all the kind of careers that i've combined to do this have all been pretty male dominated and so standing there to say to, to girls that if you're interested this is for you follow your passion pursue this you will be able to make this work jump back around We also do a lot of interactive programs. Our virtual reality has become a big program, um, taking kids on a virtual reality shark dive. We also run programs, if any of you are in South Florida, at the Marine Environmental Education Center, we've partnered with them. So we have free education day, students come out, we do lessons, and then we do activities. So here, they're actually painting 3D models to scale of a black tip shark, a species very common in Florida. So they get to paint it and take it home, and then hopefully, that's a conversation right, that they continue um, getting to chat with their families about learning about a bit more 
uh, and really just keeping that conversation going, involving the students and, and keeping them thinking about sharks. Our webinar series, I did mention that a little bit earlier. We've been doing this for seven weeks now. This week is our Women in Science Week, so it's all women who study sharks. Um, and if you miss them, because obviously we're kind of partway through the week, uh, they're all on our YouTube channel, so you can join in and, and watch those after. And so lots of incredible scientists, uh, deep sea sharks, a wide variety of species, uh, what they're working with. Um, but this week, yeah, we're featuring all women. So I was really excited to have that. But, um, and we have a lot of lesson plans or different activities that actually go along with these. So have an explore. Uh, this is something we're gonna keep running in through uh, probably World Oceans Day, so June 8th. Uh, we'll be running lessons through then. Uh, and then we'll resume in the fall, just maybe a, a kind of a smaller schedule as well. I'm just a little talk about the VR. Um, Hands-on learning, so the activities we've created, uh, even the crafts, this is engaging students in a different way. And we actually took these, the goggles to Turks and Caicos this fall, and these students, their reaction was incredible. So what I found is, even though students live on an island, they don't necessarily know how to swim. They've not been on boats before. So you'd think these are kids that should be in the ocean. They should love the ocean. I have taken a lot of students from the Bahamas out on the boat and they've never been on a boat and they live on an island that's six miles long. Okay, so in order to create kind of empathy and understanding, you've got to connect kids and that's where these hands-on learning opportunities come in. Again, kids are amazing. They have a voice. We're empowering and inspiring them and engaging. It isn't simply just a lesson. It is really getting them that experience. If we can't take them to the sharks, we can bring the sharks to them. Now we've actually made this, um, if you have goggles, you can go on YouTube and you can watch this um, in full 3D. Uh, but if you do not, I'm gonna stop sh sharing here and just show you guys this real quick again. All right, bear with me here. Last little switch over. So if you go to the website again, under education, all right, you have the webinars that I just talked about right there, the 360 Shark Dive. Now this may, because of the internet right now, may not play nice, but if you hit play, okay, and you can move it around with your mouse. You can move it around with your mouse, all right? All right, yes, it's not gonna, hold on. And it goes through several different species. This is on the hammerheads right now. Um, look up, look down. So it's as close as you can get. You can use your phone as well and, and move around. So just a fun little kind of interactive into Caribbean reefs, goes through lemons. It's about a two and a half minute, or oh no, this one's less than two minutes. So we shorten it just for online. So right now that's something that is available because we're not doing events with these. We take these to schools. This is something we can bring to your school uh, or for, if your school has goggles, we can provide that. Um, but right now, we're not doing events or in person. So I'm just gonna finish off with a couple of things. To wrap this up, one more screen share. Thank you guys for your patience with my back and forth. All right, and okay, we just did that. Uh, we also offer experiences. So for teachers that are really interested in, in getting more hands-on and then bringing that back to your classroom, we do run trips, expeditions, um, and we have opportunities where teachers come out with us or just the general public, actually. We had a lot of, this was kind of mixed, um, come out with us. We do nightly workshops. We're doing one next year in Bimini at the Shark Lab. So you'll do shark tagging, swim with sharks, uh, we'll go through the different ecosystems, seagrass to corals to uh, the mangroves, and then you walk away with curriculum and lesson plans of how to take that experience back to the classroom. So how do you, you've had this incredible experience, how do you take that back? How do you share that with your students? What do you take from it? Um, so we do have opportunities for teachers to, to dive in with us as well. Um, just a little bit of our, our kind of pages and info so you can follow us or message us and check out. And really the ultimate goal 
for us is, again, to engage students, inspire them, and, and really show them examples of how they can get involved, what they can do. And no matter what version, if it's in person, it's virtual, it's an education day, we talk about how kids, what they can do. Right? So uh, making posters, a beach cleanup. I just had a student send, he'd made a shark out of, um, he picked up trash at the beach and made a shark out of it and did that, shared that project with other students. So really is ways to get involved. Um, we talk a lot about less plastic, reusable bags, things like that. So we really connect students. We're using sharks as our sort of iconic species, but helping kids understand how they can be global citizens um, using these animals by learning about them and speaking up and, and why it's important and how, even if you're five, there's a lot you can do. And sometimes when we're young, we feel overwhelmed and we're not sure if anyone's gonna listen, but you know, whether we're talking to four-year-olds, like our friend Kristen that made that amazing poster, um, to university students. It's really to engage students, facts about sharks, the reality, not the monster myths, get them interested and excited, right? And then give them the tools to, to speak up and know they're part of making a change and they're, they're connecting to people, the natural world, um, and, and really knowing that they can make a difference. Thank you guys. I was muted. Yay, thank you so much. <laughs> I think yeah, I was thank you guys for, for hanging in there and, and uh, with all my back and forth, but it was just easier <laughs> to show exactly where stuff is. No, it was awesome. And I see um, two questions so far that are popping up at me. The first one that is coming is, how do we become an ambassador and work with you? So you can, the easiest way is we usually do applications twice a year. We have a lot of teachers actually that have joined us um, developing curriculum. Again, my background is marine science and media. Uh, I am not a curriculum developer. I am not a trained educator. I educate, but I do not have any formal training. Um, so we really love having, um, actually two of our main curriculum developers are both marine biologists that are now teachers. And that's been a huge, huge help. Um, and so, uh, twice a year, we kind of go through an application process. Uh, ambassadors could be in the school, could be doing curriculum, um, or doing virtual lessons. So it's, it really depends, or attending events with us. You just want to, you love talking with people, and you want to stand there and, and give them ideas about saving sharks. So um, best way is to email um, through the website, reach out, say you're interested, and then I can send you through sort of the application process, what happens um, we do background checks, just everybody has a background check. Um, everyone's, you know, safety first. We, we make sure we go through all that. Um, a lot of teachers are ambassadors depending on the county they're in. Uh, Florida ones get approved by the county as well to make sure uh, for going into the classroom, um, just to make it as easy as possible for you to bring us in. Um, and uh, so yeah, if you just contact us through the website, I can send you more information. Perfect, thank you. I see another one. What age do you focus your adaptation lab on? So the adaptations are, it's a grade three, four, just because what we've seen with NGSS is it's um, kind of aligns with there's some crossover there and it really kind of depends on where you are. Um, and, but elements of it could be used uh, depending on, I've had teachers pull parts of that to use for older grades as well. Um, so really have a look at it and see it's got right on the front, you can see the standards it's meeting. Um, so we really, uh, we geared it towards grade three, four, but I know students, uh, teachers have used it for slightly older students as well. And like I said, we also have along with that, we have the uh, an adaptations webinar, so video to, to talk a little bit overview of that, and then you could go into the activity. There was one about your VR goggles. Um, I think it was, what do you, what do you call them? Or yeah, what do you call the, the VR goggles? So the ones that we use are the Oculus. Uh, I think it's Oculus Go. Um, I believe as long as it's the format on YouTube now, you should be able to use, if you send me an email, um, 
Duncan does all that sort of the tech camera stuff. I could put the goggles on. I helped with the camera. I helped shoot some of the video, uh, which is an amazing, amazing camera setup that we were very lucky to use. Um, and you may have seen other kind of virtual reality, but we had a special, the camera itself is a $20,000 camera. So it's a really high quality video, which we were really lucky to get to borrow and partner actually FIU for an international university. Uh, we partnered with them to be able to use their camera uh, to create content. And we're going to have some new stuff with white sharks coming out some great white. So that's going to be really amazing. Um, and a lot of new content we're really pushing. That's kind of our next thing is we're really pushing the VR as an experience. Um, and as we can see now, virtual learning has, you know, everyone in the unfortunate situation, but it's also kind of pushed us to try and provide more opportunities. But the Oculus Go, and you can go right to YouTube on there and do it. But I know there are other ones that you can do with like the phone and things like that. I believe you should be able to just as long as you go on YouTube, if you pop your phone into those goggles, uh, the Google ones I think maybe they have, you should be able to view that just um, in, in full 360. With the swell sharks, do they have different rods slash cones to see the glow in the dark than yeah. other local that other local sharks don't have? That's what they're looking at. So I'm not sure they actually fully understand um, what is allowing, but shark eyes are very similar to ours. Um, and you know, there's this idea that people say, oh, they make mistake. They have poor vision. They have excellent vision. Um, their version of color very different than ours and that was actually a paper that came out i think at the end of last year beginning of this year uh, that they don't actually see kind of it was believed that some species could see in color because of the presence of rods and cones but it's more kind of like sh very shades of light and dark now um i don't know that they actually understand what is in the eye what is special is allowing for them to to see that um because i think it was something that again, it's only fairly recent that they, they've discovered this. There are other sharks that glow that we could see that have photophores on their, their bellies. So sort of, I always tell kids like lightning bugs that they can see, um, and which is amazing. But uh, yeah, with the swell sharks, uh, and there's another type of cat shark as well that uh, it's still, still being looked at. And I think one of the challenging parts is with some of that science is you can't study the eye of a live shark very easily. So I think it's, you know, they're trying to find that balance of having access to animals that have died so they can look at the eyes and, and fully understand that. Do you allow teachers to use your website photos as long as they're credited? Yeah, I mean, our really, all, all our stuff um, is there for people to use. Uh, that's why we created it, the lesson plans, everything. Um, we just, you know, we love seeing if you're using it. We love to hear feedback. Um, you know, hey, I think add this because you guys know way more than we do. You're in the classroom every day. We're trying to create materials to help you, but none of us, we're not teachers. Um, we don't have that experience and training. So we're just really trying to create resources to help you. But feedback is always appreciated. If you're using it um, or you have questions about using it or something doesn't, you don't quite know what to do or other ideas please reach out, always happy to, to make this as easy as possible to improve it. Um, we just kind of updated, we try and go back in and add, add updated stuff. We have a lot of new content we're working on right now. Um, so kind of in the fall, we're gonna have a whole back end kind of resources on the site, some more facts and information that students can use as, as, a, as a resource for learning and, and teachers as well. So um, plus a lot of, like I said, new video content, and uh, you know interactive activities. So that's a lot of what's what we're really working to kind of get out there and get prepped for um, probably like the new school year. I guess what that's going to look like or what that's going to start, uh, whether it's virtual or in person. Um, yeah. So that's sort of what we're working towards. Seems we have a pause in the questions. So I don't know if I want to wait like twenty seconds to see if another one comes through. Um, just I have a, I have a question actually. How many sharks do you currently have tagged that you guys are looking at? Um, so that particular tiger shark project was six. Um, it's a pretty small number because, or that's, you know, the project I am, because those tags are about $1,800 a piece. So 
uh, yeah, so funding is a big thing and um, you know, it's, it's like funding materials for your classroom. It's the same thing. We have to get funding for this. Um, Derek, a lot of the tags that he's putting out, different tags, rota tags are much cheaper. So um, the project that he's working on, kind of Fort Lauderdale based, is just a baseline understanding of which species are there and their abundance. So how many of them and how it, is it seasonal? Uh, and we do take students out with those. So um, we do offer programs for um, students to actually go out classrooms to join us tagging. Uh, once everything sort of gets back to our version of normal. Um, yeah, so we actually do offer that opportunity as a field trip for students to come out, uh, usually middle school and above, uh, to get hands-on tagging experience. So, uh, so those tags, a little bit different, more of those. Um, and uh, yeah, so but currently like the, the video I showed you with the track, six female tiger sharks. We've had a couple that have stopped because of tags. Batteries um, don't always last as long as you would hope with those. Um, but we've got a couple of other um, upcoming projects we're, we're putting together. So uh, we always try and provide new and updated. And if we're not actively doing something right now, we're trying to connect students with, with um, scientists that are, like with the webinars and the Google Hangouts. And, and so active projects that are happening right now, um, live, and they can learn about. And I get to close us off. We have two follow-up questions from the tagging question. Uh, the first follow-up was, what happened to the tag after the battery dies? So it depends on the type of tag. So a pop-off satellite tag is gonna pop to the surface and you'll get it back. The spot tags actually migrate through the shark. Uh, and one of the things that I like to tell students is, technology is changing rapidly. So our approach to studying sharks is changing as well from attachment points to the technology. Um, Duncan actually built a fin camera that stays on the shark for up to 48 hours and it has a satellite tag in it and it films. So it's sort of um, like playing a video game near the shark but it's real life. Uh, if you guys saw as well like think of the technology on I think it was Shark Cam Stakeout on Shark Week. They have this robotic camera that follows the shark. Um, so new technology, so attachment points, and that's something that's changed a lot. So right now that, that sat tag will actually migrate through and fall off. We don't get that one back, which is, a, you know, is a bummer because there's a lot of data on that. Um, we only get whatever's transmitted through the antenna if the shark comes to the surface. So there's actually a lot of data that you, you might miss that might be on that computer. So that's definitely something that is, is constantly changing, new methods of attachment, uh, minimizing impact on the animal itself. Obviously, you don't want to affect its swimming or ability to survive and function. New materials so that they don't get like algae growing on them, um, a lot of that. So it's pretty incredible uh, to see. And so I like to tell students, even if you're not interested in being a scientist, but you love building things, maybe you can engineer the next newest tag when you get older that helps scientists study sharks. So it doesn't have to be straight science. There are a lot of ways to get involved as well. Is the public able to follow the tag sharks like on the ghitracking.com? Yeah, so we, so we share the GHRI because that's Derek works with them as well. He does a lot of the, the Florida stuff, but they have Makos and Tigers and Oceanics, so that's one we love to share. That is an amazing resource for students. We don't have the budget or the, the you know, it's such a small scale for us to have that kind of website or ability because if you guys haven't checked out the, the tracking website, um, go check it out, show your students. Um, you can see different tracks, really amazing, some of these Mako sharks thousands and thousands of miles, setting records for distance in short amount of time. Um, yeah, really a cool resource if you want some live science that's happening and they're constantly updating. It's a really well done site. Uh, and we, we've always kind of incorporated that into our, if you look in most of the lesson plans, the general intro to sharks does cover a bit of um, shark science and you'll have that link in there to encourage um, you to actually explore that. And the camera on the shark that you mentioned, is it like the critter cam? Very similar. So actually one of the first projects I ever did with sharks was with critter cam. Um, and that was 16 years ago uh, with nurse sharks. And uh, 
that has changed. Um, if you guys are interested in sort of seeing the evolution of that, uh, Duncan did a, a, we talked a little bit about that on his webinar uh, with filming Shark Week and the tools they use. And these cameras were giant, the Critter Cam, the original, but they've gotten a lot smaller now, a lot thinner. Um, some of them have night vision. So yeah, it's a version of Critter Cam. It's just as technology has changed and cameras, think now what your camera on your phone can do. Right? It's amazing. It's so much better than some of the old, you know, point and shoot cameras. So, uh, yeah, I'm like uh, Duncan's video camera can shoot eight times high definition now. I mean, who needs that? No one needs that, but you can, it's IMAX quality. So, um, yeah, think about what we're the size of things and, and being able to technology is really helping um, to be able to study these animals and to see a better glimpse into their life with minimal impact. We have one final question. Um, of all the species in the world, how many of them percentage are six feet and under? Uh, it's about, I think it's about 80% uh, of shark species are less than actually five feet. So this idea that there are these giant animals, yeah, there's some big, there's some large species, uh, but there's also, you know, the pocket shark that you could hold in your hand, and that's full size. And it has, this is like one of my favorite facts, it has little pockets. It's not made pocket shark because it would fit in your pocket. It has little pockets behind its um, pectoral fins that can actually squirt out a glowing liquid. Amazing. I mean, these animals are incredible, and that's, you know, we want kids to get excited about that. And uh, I guess white sharks, great whites are amazing. Tiger sharks, hammerheads, hammerheads are my favorite. But there's all these weird and wonderful things that sharks can do, and different species. Uh, yeah, just get kids excited uh, about that and, and the weirdness and deep sea sharks and new species. So. Yeah. Well, awesome. Well, thank you everyone for all your really awesome questions. And Jillian, thank you for taking some time to answer them. Um, everyone, we hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. But before you go, we have a couple of things. Uh, please don't forget to renew your FEMSI membership. We know that many of you renew your membership automatically this time of the year as it is an option included in your regular conference fees. Without the regular conference fees, you don't automatically renew your membership. So in the chat box right now, boop, is the website to make sure that you stay current. If you enjoyed today's session, which I think we all did, uh, we hope you will consider donating to FEMSI. Our regular annual conference is our great source of funding for the organization. And we unfortunately were not able to recover all the costs that we put into uh, what would have been in our in-person conference. So thank you for allowing us to continue to put on events for wonderful marine science educators, such as all of you. You can uh, donate at our GoFundMe page that is now going into the chat box as well. Paste. Boop. So you guys can go ahead and donate if you would like to. It is Giving Tuesday. And last but not least, if um, don't forget to join us for our next presentation tomorrow at noon with Dr. Brian Nichols. That link is also going in the chat box. Perfect. And I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who joined. I really appreciate your time. Um, and I look forward to hearing um, from you and hopefully meeting some of you in the, in the future and uh, events. And, and uh, yeah, but thank you so much for, for joining today. And again, reach out if you have questions. We're more than happy to, to answer and connect. And uh, we're, we're very hands-on with our approach to engaging with not only students, but teachers as well, and, and to, to help you bring this resource into your classroom. Well, thank you again, Jillian, so much. We are so glad that you were able to actually join us since I know you were able to join us in person. So again, we really thank you and all of you, thank you for joining us and we hope to see you at our future presentations. Hey, so, thank you guys. Bye. Have a great night, everyone. Bye guys.